turn around. Yeah, come on. Hey, so you're more magnetic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, g'day. Um, we're talking with Joe about a an electromagnetic generator. Motor and generator. Oh, uh, how are you, Joe? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've never been wrong. Yeah. He's not talking about one, he's talking about your one and just giving you a few ideas about magnetic fields and how they work. So, in experience, we're playing with different motors like this and different other things. This thing here, the field effects is laying down at, at um, uh, sideways. Okay? And if you want to get on there, a, magnet, a, a compass, magnetic fields and everything else do not run up and down. Your electricity is north, south. Okay, that's all they know about. On about east and west, they don't cover that electrical field. They don't talk about up and down. They don't talk about any other degrees in between. So our AC and DC and everything else only come from north and south pole, which is horizontal, is that right? Mm. Yeah, that's vertical. Okay, up and down is vertical. So, when you are rotating a drum through a magnetic field and everything else, you're lining up your magnets and so on like that, and what we found is, um, what I found in, in differences is, by trying to do the same things like this, they work a hell of a lot better while standing them upright. So that they stand up vertical, and your magnetic fields are actually rotating around horizontally and then they match in and, and, and spin freer and line up better and you're not fighting against gravity and up and down and all these other fields. So he's just getting it on here for the tape. Okay? So if you stand it up, we found out you can break these down to a hell of a lot smaller and output a hell of a lot more because the actual fields in the earth are assisting you instead of going against. Does that make sense to you as such? As much as I can absorb it, yeah. <laughs> so, within I mean, other people's ones and everything else, what they've taken is big generators like this, similar. Okay, they've been different places, different ways. They've talked you know, talk about the same things and so on like that. And instead of putting massive amounts of electricity in, only put a very minute amount of to excite. That's all we do. Yeah. What's your small amount? Uh, the sister started, but then we have decreases all the way down to the That's top. a small amount. Wow. This fellow's putting, these other fellas, what we've played with and everything else, and what we were doing is, um, uh, we were only down to, at the most, 12 volt. No wow. more than 12 volt input, but it's outputting a hell of a lot more. And the generator, uh, you know, it excites, you, you know, your magnetic fields and it excites and everything else, and it's putting out um, massive amounts of electricity like flame on way over, way over 240. Wow. Right, so you've got to bring it back. So you're only exciting with a, a DC field input and you get a massive AC, you know, field out. Alright? So the um, now breaking roughly if you shoot into here, this thing here was about the same size as some other people what we know, uh, in you know, sizing of a generator laying down sideways. Generated, okay? And um, then what they've got now is just the idea of changing it, turning it upright, instead of laying down, they're turning it upright, and their machine is only a little bit bigger than that now. <laughs> compared to that, to that, and it's outputting ten times the amount of what the big fun could ever put in. Okay, now I don't want to on your tape and everything else mention who, what, when, where, why, because mm. it's somebody else's stuff. Mm. Okay, so within this, you're actually fighting against gravities, and your feel, your magnetic fields do not run this way. You understand? They don't. So you want to take really away all that load and everything else. You you stand it up and you rotate it that way, and you change the way that your magnets, your coils are, and your coils and your magnets and and, um, and so on like that will tap into so that the Earth will actually assist. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, that makes... Yeah, you got to fit in with the... the you earth. fit in so you're not fighting against. Yeah, fit in with okay. the earth harmony. Now, well, Peter's not doing that. Um, I'll take you up and I'll show you some other things what occurs through magnetic fields which you can use for different things. And, and these magnetic fields and everything else are only working properly and everything else because of 
the moisture, water or H2O, what you call it, in our atmosphere here. Okay? So that's what I said to use. It's on tape. If you have a compass, and a compass is magnets, and your compass, say a needle of south pole, will point to the north, okay, and so on. And, but what will affect that? You say that your, your compass needle, it's a magnet, and the Earth's magnetic field is strong, so you're just going to keep walking with your compass till you hit the North Pole. No. You cross any water, and that water is rotating, if you want to check it, your, your water underneath the ground and, and everywhere else, even on top of the ground, is rotating over, you know, rolling, and it rolls three ways. You've only got two systems here. What you've got is only a north and a south pole That's right, pushing a pull. Your water, your fields in the earth, don't just have two poles. Okay? They tap into a hell of a lot more poles, what they don't use you don't consider. So if this was a compass and you actually crossed across water and if that water and so on like that was um, uh, one kind of water, say you've got clean and dirty water as such, your compass if it's clean water, it, uh, your clean water will carry a negative charge. Now if it's running from west to east and everything else what will happen is you've got a south pole tip on your compass that will attract to the north Okay? Okay. If you've got dirty water and so on, you've got a south pole here and dirty water is south pole and your south pole water is going the same way and everything else, what will actually happen is it will not attract to the direction of your, your dirty water. Uh, you know, it will push away. So if you, cr yeah, it does. you cross over dirty water and your compass south pole tip is going to aim and run long ways wherever you cross that water. Okay, and the other thing what can happen too is crossing the water a certain way with your compass. The same as crossing ever use the compass and crossed a magnet. Yeah. It repolarizes it. <laughs> if your, your compass now can turn around the opposite damn way because you repolarized your magnets. You understand? Know so now if you're looking at what you really got in your magnets and everything else, is your your north pole should be rejecting itself from the North Pole, but now your North Pole of your compass is actually attracting to the North Pole, and your South Pole is actually attracting to the South. Okay? Now, you, uh, well, they might tell you that all you've done is you've changed your North Pole magnet to South. No, you haven't. What you actually got is the, the North Pole tip on your, on your compass has, it's not one piece magnet. <coughs> See, if you got one piece magnet, you'd have north, uh, uh, you'd have south on this end, north on that end. Right. But these are only tip pieces. So to do that, you would have a south pole, small piece, and just prior, just at the magnetic piece, you would have north pole at the other side. And now you've got the same on the other end of your compass. Okay. Now, when it repolarizes, what actually happens is. But she flips them without changing. She flips that field. And what actually happens is, you have North Pole, right? You've got North Pole facing to... Yeah. You've got North facing...